All right, good evening, guys. It's Colin from Marva speaking, and uh, Leonie, my beautiful wife, with me. Video for general release. This is not only for our members and our existing followers. This is a video I hope will travel far and wide because this is now the next step that I've spoken about so many, many times previously. I think we are there because the uh, COVID uh, lockdown and whatever followed in its uh, in its wake opened up the political, social and economic sphere to such an extent that the first time we have enough fluidity to proceed with political reform in in the proper way that political reform is, is supposed to be to fix and remedy the system, not just simply to uh, empower the bad guys even further. Mm. Exactly. Really? Well, Skog, what I've noticed is that so many people are asking you know, they, they have so much faith in you that they are asking for you to go to Parliament. So tell us, what do you stand for? Yeah, let's, let's deal with the whole issue of Parliament. Uh, many years ago, and now I'm speaking at least a decade ago, I was the first time uh, approached by people to, to say to me, but called you must climb into politics. You have a lot to say. You have a lot of great ideas to, to bring forth, um, etc. Um, I, I made it very clear from then on even until today that I'm not here to, to be elected into political office. I don't like politicians. I don't think a political system in any way serves the, uh, the, the interest of the people of this country. Um, so I have never seen myself as a politician. A politician in any way is a person who makes his living out of politics. I've never made my life or my, my livelihood out of politics. So I'm not a politician, please, please. Um, I, I see certain of my enemies try to run rampant with the idea that I'm now somehow positioning myself to, to be a politician. I will never become a politician. I, I want to be the bugbear of politicians. So yeah, let's let's get that, that, that out of the way. However, it is also true, and this is the third time that I've, I've spoken at, uh, about this uh, in public, that people, especially now after the COVID uh, so-called pandemic and everything that we did yourself yourself was was uh, all that uh, always part and parcel of, of of the fight back um many good people out there were part of the fight back we stopped the uh, the evil in its four tracks and now people are, are looking for further leadership and further uh programs so that we can counter any repeat by the the powers that should not be in, in future and yes I've been approached now several times um, relating to the issue of Parliament. I'm not really, not yet, fully sold on, on the idea. There's, there's various reasons why not. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, it, it's, it's a fact that I, I will have to, to deal with in, in the coming months. Um, whether I do stand for uh, a polit uh, elected political position, um, I don't really know if that's the way to go. But we must go into the political sphere of uh, of our society now with urgency and and uh, a lot of hard work and I think determination to turn things around now because we're never going to have that opportunity again. In my opinion, it is necessary because we all know that you can make a difference. Thank you, my dear. Thank you for what 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 you're saying to me. Okay, what do I stand for? Um, you have quite a few questions and mm. you popped that question the last yes. time we were on video. Mm. So my dear, the, the floor is yours. If you have questions, then, then okay. ask it and uh, let's see how far we get with this, this discussion. I also, um, in the wake of this video, want my, my followers and non-followers to, to critique um, mm. and, and to give ideas and to discuss the issues and guide me and positive critique though yeah <laughs> um look we, we we're sitting with with a bunch of, of total lunatics trying to, to to do damage we've had that for for many years previously it's nothing strange nothing new so it's it's not really making any any effect on me um unfortunately it's it's starting to boil over it had had already boiled, boiled over into our real lives outside of social media mm. but that is being being handled through the legal process very effectively so mm. um, i don't even want to, to go into the extremely effective measures that's already in place and then secondly uh, most importantly also um what is now coming up in the very near future so i don't want to, to divulge too much at this point in time 
relating to that. Yeah, people, uh, look, critique. Um, uh, there's, there's this notion out there that the moment a question is asked of me, um, I will block you or I will come down on you or fight to, with, with you or whatever. I, I block on social media, I block uh, troublemakers, I block known agents of state, mm -hmm. I block known agent provocateurs. Those people are not, are not our people. They are mm -hmm. here to disrupt, they are there to, to cause division, to make people fight amongst uh, one, one another about politics, about religion, about anything. Anything, anything, even language, even anything. whatever can, can be utilized to, 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 to split people up. They are there. Mm -hmm. So um, if a person comes, comes to me from that milieu, then bye-bye, there's the door. Mm -hmm. But if you have a real question, a legitimate question, something that really troubles you, feel free to, to critique yeah, and ask like questions. If you're going to come onto his page and look for trouble, I mean, we're not going to even engage in that. Because really, we don't have to, and we're not going to. That is why people will get blocked and they will get kicked off. So it's just, you know, yeah. Yeah, of course, I'm not, I'm not going to give my enemies a platform. And no. I, see, I see a very interesting trend, <laughs> as beans and never will be, and forgotten using my, my name and all the buzz around me and all the legal aspects and the cases and all these things. You will see that they, they, uh, they touch on that and they, they give opinions usually against me on the, the mm -hmm. social media platforms and all of a sudden there's a flurry of activity because people are running me behind a name, Skulk for a Merva and all mm -hmm. the things re relating to that. Um, it's just for those, those people to boost their, their social media platforms. I'm certainly not going to give my platform to those people to further then abuse because no. it's abuse. If you can't, can't build your, your own following, mm -hmm. then come and sponge on my name. But okay, I don't want to speak about exactly. any negativity tonight. I want no. to speak to the people out there so that they yes. know what, where, how, who, all those, those so important things. So, to come back to our first question, what do you stand for? Well, as, as I said on, on my, my first video, my, my core tenet um, will always be conservatism. Um, I've, I'm, I'm a revolutionary conservative. If that's in any way possible, I don't know... Uh, Maybe it's a contradiction in terms. But what I mean with that is that we have come so far around that the ideology that we, we are, are facing today is communist. It is Marxist. It is leftist. Um, it's not even liberalism anymore. It's, it's very close to, to what is um, in place in a communist country like uh, communist, uh, communist China. Um, I see that our, our president himself and many of the, uh, the uh, uh, executive of the ANC belong to the South African Communist Party. The uh, main opposition party to the ANC, the DA, is by its own uh, standards what it's called a social democrat party. Now, social democracy is, is just uh, the small, um, less scary brother of, of communism. I'm against that. I'm, I'm the guy on the other, other side of the spectrum. So if you want to call me then a conservative, then I'm a conservative. But I'm also a revolutionary in, in my way of thinking because I realize time has run out. The time of evolution and, and, and uh, to put things in place through gradualism. The time has passed. If we now overhaul the system, we overhaul it quickly. We do it within a space uh, or a time fr a frame of or three to five years. We can fix this country. We can fix it. Definitely. Um, I think uh, that the leader of um, what is that that Muslim group? Um, they always they always do the charity work. I can't remember his, his name now. He also came out today or yesterday and he said there's only six months needed to fix South Africa. I differ with him in, in a, to a certain extent because I've seen the the extent of the damage um, that we've we've already incurred. But yes, we, we can certainly fix it. How do we fix it? Through conservative principles, through, through importing conservative ideology into what we do on a daily basis. And uh, now, what is conservatism? Is that Cook Sisters or what, what is that? I was supposed to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> can you Cook Sisters back, my vrouw? Um, I have once before, but um, I will never do it again because it's yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, no, no. 
I, I have nothing, nothing okay, against, so someone nothing, against nothing against good sisters. Nothing against good sisters. What does conservatism mean? Okay, con conservatism, <laughs> many years back, when, when right wing and left wing started to evolve in politics, conservatism usually meant um, that those those people adhere to, to royalists. They, they were usually supporting of kings, kingships, um, empires, and so forth. But a lot of, of what has, has run into the sea in the meantime, centuries has passed. Conservatism today is, is not that. It's not bringing back um, the things that did not work in the past. Conservatism is an extremely dynamic political force today. Um, it has very different interpretations. To, to me, it's, it's based on a host of issues that we are going to run through now, or some of them at least, because mm -hmm. this video simply, we can't make it too long. We, we need to focus on, on certain areas. What I just want to say, as a layperson, does a, a conservatism have anything to do with racism or going back to the so-called apartheid era? Okay, that's, that's a very, very key question in South Africa. And the, and the simple question is, no. <laughs> people, people always think that conservatism in South Africa by necessity means that now you want to, to return to um, forced segregation of people, to, to what, what was called by the British um, a separate development by, um, and segregation later on the Nationalist Party. Um, coined the phrase apartheid, I think they were very stupid to, to, to give the, the system a name. They, they should just have enacted certain legislation and, and uh, mm -hmm. had it run its, its full course, not, not uh, uh, making it an, an ideology and then all the supposed and real evils that, that was coupled to it. So no, conservatism has nothing to do with race per se. It has nothing to do, it's definitely not apartheid. Apartheid in, in fact was a little bit the opposite of conservatism uh, for, for many, many reasons. But that's, that's a very, very scientific uh, analysis we're not going to, to have to do here. So the short answer is no, it has, it has nothing to do with race. In fact, surveys amongst all South Africans of all races and backgrounds show that more than 70% of South Africa are actually conservative in their thinking. Mm. They think about family values, they think about gun rights about personal safety, about constitutionality, about the rule of law. Um, it's, it's part of how they perceive the real world to be, which makes them conservative even if they, they, they don't realize it. Now, there's, there's a very interesting thing about that. Also, 70% of South Africa did not vax. So can, can you start to see the, uh, the correlation between what people think ideology, uh, ideology uh, uh, through ideology of, of politics versus what they do in real life? Yes, we can actually see it now becoming um, a reality in front of us. I also said on my, my other video, uh, it's very strange to me that, that many of my liberal uh, acquaintances, those people that found themselves to be more to the left, slanted to the left, has, has come over totally to, to this side. They've, they've become even yeah. more conservative um, than, than many of, of my traditional conservative brothers and sisters, many of them. I've drifted to, to the center because they, they realize, well, the enemy is not ne necessarily the black guy or the, the yellow guy or whatever guy was previously pointed out by the media to be my enemy. They realize there's a much bigger enemy mm. who's, who's the enemy of us all. Mm -hmm. And that person or that, that grouping needs, needs to be fought. Yeah, well, I must say, I can see it through the clients that you help. So. <laughs> yeah, now that came as, as, a, as quite a surprise because, um, okay, I would say about half of my clients are conservative Afrikaans um, in, in their background. But <laughs> I have huge numbers mm -hmm. of English-speaking liberal people just mm -hmm. simply standing on what was classical liberalism not very long ago that was basically taken and made part of conservatism today, individual rights, personal human rights. Um, count too much to them to, to just simply go and, and put the needle in, into to their arms. So a lot of English conserv um, English liberals are also my clients and have become actually my friends and, and some of my, my staunchest supporters. Mm. And different races. Different races. Mm -hmm. um, many of, of my clients and once again who became later on staunch um, supporters are not white people. Mm. I was always portrayed even not very long ago by a report, Jana, 
when you said I, I said people must go and shoot policemen, you you, you still refer to me as as a right winger. Um, it's it's a it's a, 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 a albatross you want to do to hang around my neck, but it's not only you. People like myself are seen to be racist right wing, right? And unfortunately, we're sitting with uh, a heritage in South Africa. Two-tone, khaki, um, clad people walking up and down and, and trying to march in, in the streets under the influence of brandy. I see there's, there's a lot of brandy being sold these days by certain people. Uh, yes. <laughs> there's no list for my burkula. Uh, Where's yeah, my we... brandy? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's interesting how, how people in the end show themselves to be themselves. Brandy and but cola. Brandy and cola. <laughs> brandy and coke. Three liter Ford. Um, two tone shirts. And I have nothing, once again, if, if you're a farmer and, and you do hard work, I have no, no problem with the way that you dress. I would also dress like that. Um, I used to dress like that when, when I was still a farm boy because it's practical. Eh? Um, but if you live in the city, you have nothing to do with a farm. Why dress up like a little farm boy with your little khaki clothes and your little boots and walking around like that? And you a... have to take everybody into consideration. I mean... To... Because you see, that's, that's the problem. That is where conservatism mm. then fails. Because it's, it's seen to be conservative, to be a burki. Now, I want to touch on that. I really want to touch on that. When I go and I look at the old photographs, and we, we also looked at a lot of old photographs the last two to three weeks now, um, when, when we were going through cupboards and cleaning up and doing all these things. The Boer, the real Boer, with a, with a capital letter B, and I saw it, the people in, in, in my, when, when I was growing up in my, my grandfather's house, the pictures on the wall and the pictures um, in, in boxes and in albums. Gari Boere was trots and had kispakke and sisrok aan getrek, mm. right? Mm. My father never went to town. He was a farmer. His, his hands were worked through. Never went to town without putting on a suit and putting on his hat. And had gesê, hy sê, soos die duivel, hy sê, so op die een oor. He used to, to put on his, his hat. They had their skew. pride. Not the people. Yes. that are now conservative burkis. Um, in actual fact, you, to, to a certain extent, you Burkis you've, with you've, not a capital letter. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've, you've become quite, quite a liability for, for us. Mm. So, conservatism, to, to answer quickly on, on, on your question, nothing to do with racism, mm. nothing to do with race per mm. se, and nothing to do with the image that the media try to portray, portray of conservative Afrikaners, as being people that speak like this and they drink a lot of brandy and they wear khaki. And that is that is precisely what conservatives must I would also say it, it, it's not even about religion because definitely yeah. not, definitely mm -hmm. not. Uh, you must you must remember that we, we come out of a milieu in South Africa. Now once again, South Africa is is practically a Christian country because mm -hmm. eight out of ten South Africans still see themselves mm -hmm. as Christian. Now, what Christianity is, it's very difficult for me to, to sometimes put in, into, into a little box to make it easy for me to understand because there's so many denominations and so many ways of interpreting um, religion and Bible and so forth. But yes, conservatism also does not necessarily pertain to, 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 to religion. Um, there's always a Christian right, and they are supposed to be like, People believing in flat earth and things like that. We're not people believing in flat earth. Um, it doesn't so matter what you believe in. As long as you have the same goal, yes. then we'll take hands. Yes. So, once again, through the last 18 months, I've seen Muslim people standing up mm -hmm. and fighting the evil. I saw Jewish people standing up, many Jewish people standing up, especially Orthodox Jews, standing up and fighting, fighting what, 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 what was clearly the evil. Mm. I saw Christians doing it. I saw heathens, Germanic heathens, standing up and fighting. I see pagans fighting. I see people that were previously seen as to be Satanists, but they are not Satanists. They, they simply believe in, in different ways and then seeing things. Mm. Sometimes it's, it's scary to me. It's, it's in, a, in a milieu that I don't it's because know. Some people don't understand it. But, but once again, they were fighting the evil. Now, if you are fighting with me shoulder to shoulder against obvious evil, then mm. you can't be evil. Or 
somewhere I miss something. Mm. But yes, also it does not denote anything relating to, to religion. All right. What do you think is important to the people of this country? You tell me. You you don't lie, person. <laughs> what what is it that makes you scared and and troubles you and make you feel unwelcome and no, it's just anxious. When, no, not it. It's just the the, the government, you know, who doesn't uh, keep up. Uh, the towns or, okay. or the roads or anything. Excellent. Let's start with service delivery. You're speaking of service delivery. Mm. When we speak of service delivery, why is this happening? Because we're sitting in a unitary state. And within the unitary state, we're sitting with a single party, the ANC. Mm. And on top of that single party, their brain trust is the South African Communist Party. So we're actually sitting in a Soviet Republic. Mm -hmm. We're sitting in exactly the same position as the people in Russia pre-1991, um, mm -hmm. when, when communism came to an end, practically came, came to an mm -hmm. end there. South Africa is a one-party state. I've said it often, I've, I'm, I'm saying it again, with all respect to the DA, with all respect to, to the green, little green men from, from the, the, the Freedom Front Plus, mm -hmm. um, you count nothing. The Constitution of South Africa was created and was written as a winner-takes-all type of a situation. There's a lot of nice words and all kinds of, of processes, but the effect of power lies with the party that has 50, 50 plus one, 50 seats in parliament plus one seat. That gives them 100% power in this country. So, so you have an opposition party going nuts sometimes in the media and threatening and going to court and having a lot to say, but... Hey, we're sitting in a failed state after 30 years, so if you were effective as opposition, then why did it happen? Exactly. Second question, <laughs> if you were effective enough to lift the ANC out of, out of the cushions, why has it not happened 30 years down the line in a failed state? Mm -hmm. We're the only country in the world where democracy has failed to such an extent that the opposition parties can't knock out the party that caused the state to fail. Think, think about that for, for one moment. So yes, service delivery is a huge problem for people. Why? Because we're sitting in a unitary state, a treasury that is controlled by the ANC and money being siphoned off to, to ground level, not to be utilized, but to be spent on salaries, bribes, and tenders that's, that's not completed. And that is why nothing happens. There's not, no service delivery. Not even to mention to get through to them when you want to call them. I mean, really, it, 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 it's a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, because there's, there's basically no discipline. Um, mm. the, the state is, is governed on, on its inside by the trade unions. Now, obviously, the trade unions and the ANC government being reliant on the votes from the trade unionists are not going to, uh, not, not going to hassle their own workers. Mm. So that is why the state service has basically come to, to a standstill. There's, there's uh, a few of, of, of the state departments, and here and there you will still find state departments that works excellently. But it's, it's the iso isolated incidents. In general, the state and state-owned enterprises, ESCOM, etc., etc., um, is failing dismally just simply because there's no real intent in having them achieve success. They are used as mechanisms by the criminal ANC. Remember what I've said so many times, the ANC is a criminal organization, it's not a party. It's just for the criminal organization, the ANC, to find a mechanism to siphon off money. That's the only thing. That is why we still have the state service that's usually um, more unusually blown up in, in, in the numbers of staff. And you have the, the failing SOEs into which billions, up billions are thrown, but without any success or, or remedy. I think I would also just like to say, you know, in the case of people voting for you, it's not like they're voting for you as president because you stand for self-determination. And self-determination is where people have, you know, they have control over their own area. Yes, yes, that's true. So that's look, one of the benefits. Look, people, at, at one stage, and I'm once again not going to, to step on too many toes because then people thinking Brandy is going to be angry at me. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we all know of, of everybody who wants to become president of, of South Africa. But um, not everybody can do it. <laughs> I don't want to be president of South Africa, with the greatest respect. But I do want to bring the ideas of the direct democracy 
to, to the South Africans. I want to bring the idea of self-determination of communities to South Africans. I want to bring the idea ideas of federalism, but I'm, I'm more a confederalist to South Africans. Now, now we're speaking real hard, hardline politics. So, so what do I mean by, by all these things? Direct democracy is where you do not vote like at this present moment for a party and the party has a list of candidates and you don't even know who's the person representing you. Because literally, if you ask me now who's, who's the councillor of, of the area in which I live, I don't know. And I'm very clued up on politics, right? Down in Hennenman, my, my house there, when, when I'm there, I know it, at least it's Maxi. Everybody knows Maxi because she's, she's, been, she's been one of the diehards there. Um, if you have a problem, you call Maxi. So, so I know who's my counsellor on that side. But the long and the short is, we, we, we need to bring direct democracy where a Leone or a Skalk or whoever, throw a name in, into that, is nominated by the people and he must account to the people there on, 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 on ground level. He must come back to a town hall meeting and he must come and face his constituency and say to them, this is what I did, and this is what I did, and this is what I didn't do, and this is the reason why not. And they must decide, do we recall him? Is he doing work for us? Is he serving our interests or is he serving his own interests in his pockets? And that is why we need direct democracy, not indirect democracy like we have it now. So obviously we're going to see we, we need to see a change in the electoral system that we already see. That is one of the reasons why we went to the IEC now recently to go and discuss the whole issue with them. They understand exactly what they're supposed to do. It's going to assist us tremendously. But we're going to have to also remedy it through constitutional means, where, where the constitution will, will, will need to be amended to make direct democracy possible. Because one of the core tenets of the, the, the current constitution itself is direct democracy. But it has been overturned already. It has been captured already. Self-determination. Section 235 says that certain communities, linguistic, um, religious, uh, cultural, all those communities can have self-determination. They can, they can determine their own affairs. I want to take it a little bit further. South Africa is an empire. Remember when, when, we, when we became a country in 19, 1910 under the British, we were different countries put together as an empire. Listen to what I'm saying. And I'm not only speaking of the old Cape province and Natal and the Boer Republics. I'm also speaking of traditional black areas and traditional black kingships and kingdoms. Mm -hmm. South Africa in its but at, at its very core is an empire. Now, what is an empire? Empire is, is a lot of different states governed by an emperor. But usually, they govern themselves. If you go and look at the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, the Parthian Empire, the Macedonian Empire, um, the Empire of Charlemagne, Charles the Great, um, I, can, I can call you every one of the great... Genghis Khan, we know you um, <laughs> the Hans, Attila the Hans, um, the old Chinese empires, right? You found that people were left alone to govern themselves. Mm. And they have their own religion, and they have their, their own government, and even they have their own taxes. But then on top, the empire would sit to make peace. In, mm. in Rome it was called Pax Romana, the peace of Rome. So as long as, as you were peaceful and you didn't challenge the, 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 the empire and the emperor in Rome, then you were protected. The moment you didn't, they went and they smashed you. Um, but that is what we need in South Africa. We need to see that we are in an empire of different nationalities, of nations, of cultural groups, mm. of religious groups. And if you empower those groups, they don't become part of a great mass of slaves. You empower them. You make them powerful. You're a proud Zulu. You're a proud Boer. Right? You're a proud Christian. You're a proud Muslim. And, yeah. Right? Then all of a sudden, a lot of the problems disappear that yeah. comes with the unitary state. Mm. Because in our diversity, our real diversity, is our strength. Sometimes I go and sit with, with, with black people. And I listen to how they speak and how they, they solve problems. To my mind, being Germanic, coming from Europe, raised in a Western type of way, we think a certain way, we box things, we, mm. we do a thing logically. 
Um, then you go and sit and, and you listen to how, how the, the black cultures deal with deal with problems, and, and you find fairness, for instance, to, to be very high up. You you yes. find respect to oh, be yeah. very high up. Um, so the legalism of our system transcends with those 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 groups into more to, to fairness. That is why in, in labor law, for instance, fairness counts much more than legalism. Now to, to us it's it's strange. We, we we want to always make a thing like this. It's in a little box. Mm -hmm. We want to control it, ne? That is how the Western mind is is designed. But the African mind makes chaos. You also make chaos. But <laughs> Oh my goodness. But, but makes chaos. I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> makes chaos. And from that chaos, they then come to conclusions to, to say, but this is not really necessary, so let's drop this. This is not, but it's all done in, in a spirit of, of mutual interest to one, to, to yeah. one, one another, things like that. So, so we can learn a lot from mm -hmm. one another. Um, Muslim people, um, a lot of things are always said about Muslim people. I'm not pro Muslim. I'm certainly not pro fundamentalist Muslim guys running around as um, terrorists and, and killing killing people. I've never supported that. I will never support it. Whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Muslim, whether you whatever religion, I don't. I will never support that. But I found that Muslim people sometimes are, are some of of the most charitable people. You go to them and you say to them, "We have this and this and this problem. Please solve it for us." And when you get back to them, it's it's solved. Whereas the Afrikaners, for instance, we come we come forward to say, no, I was for you, no buy a yelp. We're going to give you a lot of money to do this mm -hmm. and that. And then three weeks down the line there's nothing. Mm -hmm. And you keep on calling and eventually you give up. Yes. Of course it was only talk. But okay, I don't want to become negative about things, but you get the gist of, of what, what we what we It's like about. when you treat people with respect, that's what they give you back. No, that's Usually. A fact. That's, that's, that's a fact. <laughs> okay, next question. In the case of an area being self-determined, who will keep mm. the money in treasury? Okay. Um, the whole idea of self-determination speaks about who, who control the finances of the state more than anything else. Self-determination is economically more than anything else. Because you can have the best state possible in terms of ethnicity, of culture, whatever, but if you can't put government on ground, then you're wasting your time. Okay, so, so the most crucial thing um, in coming years will be to take control over the flow of our own money, tax money. Right. What happens at this point in time? SARS, which is, uh, I don't know if, if you're even aware of this, is not even formally part of the state. It's an agency working for state. But you pay your, your, your tax over to SARS, SARS take a certain percentage of that money for them because it's a business and the rest is, is dumped in, into a treasury that is run by, by the central government. And from the treasury, they then allocate certain monies back to the ground level. It siphoned down the system, but eventually it never reaches ground level. That system must be turned upside down. The money of the community stays in the community. Yeah. It's as simple as that. So if you have the self-determination in your area, in your municipality, you keep your finances. Now that the obvious question then arises, but you will have rich areas and poor areas. There are some, some areas that, that won't be able to, to look after themselves, whereas other, other areas will have sur 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 surpluses. Yes, we will have to do to find a practical solution of moving money also. Mm. To, to, to become equitable between societies. We, we must, be, we must be, yes. be very, very careful of not hoarding riches in one place. And a lot of other people are, are literally starving and, and, and doesn't have, have pay to, to eat. Because that's actually my next question. I mean, say there's a, a poor area mm -hmm. who succeeded in getting self-determination. How will they be able to, to govern themselves? Yes. And that is, that is what I'm, I'm speaking about. So, yeah. so in the end, we will, we will have to, to go in and, and redesign the finances of state to such an extent that money is kept on ground level, but where there's a so surplus that that money can be utilized in a better way in national interest. But once again, the people giving must see where their money is going. Mm -hmm. You can't go and build 
uh, a Jojo Tower for, for 10 million rand, right? Or build a bridge. Yeah, I just wanted to... I that just wanted bridge. to say that. I mean, you're stealing my thoughts. Okay, yeah, but the anyways. <laughs> the bridge that was like... Four million, four I think. Four million or something. Yeah, and ridiculous. It's, it's like, it's like I, I, can, I can do it in my backyard with a few bricks and and, uh, and, the, and the back of cement. But the tender was four million and, and they did it. Sasselberg, many years ago, oh. we had an incident mm -hmm. where we had tap. A tap, a simple tap. Huh? Broke on, on a... On a uh, a traffic island and tenders went out and in the end the lowest tender was a quarter million rand. A quarter million rand to fix a tap. How do you fix a tap? You 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 screw it open, you put in the new washer, you screw it back and, and the tap works. Quarter mil for, for that. And that is wasting money. Yes, exactly. That is wasting oh, money. No, it's more than and, wasting and money. And if we, we had self-determination and direct democracy, mm -hmm. the community would then at the first town hall meeting stood up and said why did you waste our money on this? What happened here? And somebody had to, to answer to them. Yes, definitely. Okay, and then I also want you to explain the difference between a unitary state, federal state and the confederation. Okay, okay. I see a lot of, of people are, are speaking of South Africa becoming more federal. Now, yes, yes, a very interesting thing. Our constitution is already a federal constitution. I don't know if people are even aware of that. Um, it, is, it is written in such a way that provinces have certain powers and municipalities have certain powers, have certain powers. In actual fact, the, the constitution as it stands today does not speak of levels of government, being the national government is now higher than the province or the municipality. It speaks of spheres of government, which are all equal. Now think, think for a moment what we actually already have. If the municipality is just as strong as the national government, why, why is Ramaphosa dictating to you in your house what you can do and not can do? You, smoking. I'm not a smoker, so I will never, never uh, support smoke. But I know that when cigarettes were banned, um, a lot of people inside the houses, I mean, it's your personal choice whether you want to, to smoke a cigarette or not. No. But the nanny state... Of Ramaphosa and, and Mrs. Zuma comes to you and says, no, you can't, you can't smoke now. Koptuk. Koptuk. <laughs> and taking a little drink. I don't know if I'm going to have a drink, but I don't have a drink. I'm speaking of ordinary people having a little drink. You can't have a drink in your house. How ludicrous to be treated like children whilst mm. you are the citizen with the rights. Exactly. The constitution protects you, not the government. And therefore, we, we need to, to use what we already have, the spheres of government, federalism, meaning that power is not supposed to be in the hands of one party, and one person, effectively Ramaphosa in South Africa up to now, in the very near future, I, I foresee that Ace Mahashule is going to play a very crucial role, be very careful, I've been warning about this for, for years now. That is not what we need in South Africa. So federalism is where the provinces, as they are today, are given more powers. We see down in the West Cape, the DA, having this little attempt there, um, very soft attempt to get policing into, into their sphere of, of, of government. Well, actually, they have it already. It's, it's just a ruse. It's just to, to get votes. But why only police? Why not all the powers of state? And only giving a little bit that little bit that's now in national interest back to, to the national government. That is how it's supposed to work. So that is federalism. I'm a confederalist, where it goes even further, where you have self-determination of peoples and of areas where they govern themselves 95%. And it's only those real, very crucial aspects which are governed by a very small government on top that acts as a national, let's call it an empire, um, government. Um, that is what we need in South Africa, because that is going to stop the ANC sitting in, in an office in Pretoria, ruining the entire country. That is the only way that we're going to stop that, mm. by taking federalism and building it further down the line into confederalism, where communities look after themselves, mm. handle their own finances, Safety, have freedom, security, have their own have, say, have, have freedom, mm. govern their own um, education system, yes. everything. But just for instance, um, defense being 
something for, for the for the, the confederal government. Um, national economic policy, um, things like that. The really high up few things that, that needs to be in the hands of, of government. Yes, one of the one of the other things I, I want you I know you want to ask a question. Government should be as small as possible. That's what I wanted to ask you, actually. Okay. It, it, it's what role will the go uh, will the government play yes. within self determination? Yes, I'm. I'm now. Now people are going to say, yeah, but it's called, you can't even choose what what political system you you belong to. I'm also an anarchist. Now, anarchy is sometimes seen as chaos, but but if if you really go in and and look what what the anarchists believe in, they believe in in government so small as possible, even to the extent where there is no government. Right, and that is what I also believe. I believe that government must be as small and unobtrusive as possible. Mm. It must must have so little power as possible. Yes, you can't have like at the beginning of, of lockdown, uh, the, the 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 chief of, of the army coming on, on national TV and saying, "Nu als gaan vir gaan skop en donner." <laughs> you can't skop and donner <laughs> citizens. We pay your salary, you bloody asshole. <laughs> Um, sorry, sorry, pardon my French. <laughs> no, it's not. It's just a little message coming through. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we, we can never have that. That's that's folly, it's pure folly. We're not supposed to, to ever have that in, in South Africa. Okay. Um, government must be as small and unobtrusive as possible. Because we are all adults living in, in this country making the decisions. Hopefully, sometimes children do, but I'm speaking now in general terms. Okay, my dear, you have a last question, you Yes, said? my last question is please explain to us the gun rights and the rights to personal safety. Yeah, people following me for, for a long time, you've, you've seen that I've, I've been very um, active, but I don't want to step on toes because there's, there's already very well established and very effective gun ownership associations and hunting societies in South Africa. So I don't want to, to, do, to be seen to come and capture you Sometimes people tell me, but but Skull, your, your finger is, is, is into everything and, and all the pies and, and you want to control everything. That is why I'm, I'm standing on the background. But I'm fighting very hard for gun rights. Mm -hmm. Now, why gun rights? Why why the right to, to, to possess and own a firearm? It's simple to protect yourself. <laughs> yes, but it's not only to, to protect yourself. If you have a, a vigilant armed citizen's force, Number one, criminals run away. Number two, foreign parties are very scared to come and attack you. Attack you. Mm. The United States will never be attacked. They will never be attacked. Mm. They will be undermined and their, their government has been taken over. But you will never find a Chinese army landing in California trying to take over the United States. Why? Because there's more guns than people in the United States. They know, every citizen, and there's lots of them, there's about 150 uh, 50 million of them who, who declared themselves previously as patriots and willing to, to even defend from internal enemies the state, right? So secondly, the enemy will never come to you. you you're like a hedgehog or a, a Easter Fark. A, what, what is that? What is that? A porcupine. Yeah. So, so, so the enemy will, will never come. But here's the third one, and, and this, this, is, this is actually the most important one for, for me. A strong force of citizens keep a government at bay. Yeah. This is what is important. What happened in South Africa during COVID? Strong armed government came because they thought that all South Africans have become docile and scared, and they can scop and donner us. Do you know me? And then they, they realize, oh gosh. Oh gosh, um, very little of our propaganda worked through the years. Mm. These people have not become soft. They've actually become extremely hard. And that is why the program of government flopped. It was not because of Skulk van der Merwe. I can never take the, the credit of, of, of deceiving. <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I will never do, do, do that, of, of the, the, defeating COVID. But the whole, the whole program that was put on the shoulders of the Ramaphosa uh, government and even paid for, never came to fruition. Why? Because the citizen in the street opposed it. Mm -hmm. They told the government, take your needle and go and stuff it. Mm -hmm. 
where you, where you, you, you want to stop it. It's not going in, into me. We can't do it alone. We need everybody else out there to help us and to stand together and do it all together. Yes. And I think that is what pretty much happened. Um, at the height of the lockdown, I, I, never, I, I was never locked down. I, I drove around. I, I met there and I started to, to come and visit there during lockdown. Down. <laughs> Just, just to give you an indication, you, you don't bind me, bind me down. You, mm. you, don't, you don't stop me from, from going over provincial um, boundaries. Um, I'm a boor. My, my family has, has been here since, since 1661. You're not going to, to tell me where I can travel or I can't and travel. So I was, and I'm a rebel. <laughs> so I was never locked down. And during, during all my, my travels during the lockdown period, I visited a host of areas. Rich areas, poor areas, white areas, black areas. To go and see how the, the, the citizens react. Mm -hmm. And it was it was very interesting to me to see that the average black citizen was actually quite rebellious about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so so we the the so-called conservative right-wing uh, white areas complied to many extents fully with the, with the lockdown and, and without later without asking any questions. Yeah, without giving giving any any real real opposition. You found that in the black areas, in in, in many black areas, not most, many black areas, those people were very hardline, and mm. they said to the government, go and go and stick it. It's nothing. It's nothing to do with. Remember, the whole thing of COVID and vaccination had nothing to do ever with illness or pandemics. It was a an experiment of how to control populations. Oh, yes. right? And you can make this, this office false news. We see it now. We realize it now. The we don't have to the it in, in, any longer. <laughs> right? And what they found in South Africa was something that they never counted on. They found okay. seven out of ten South Africans giving them a middle mm. finger. Yeah. Right? And that is why we need gun rights. We need citizens not to only, and, and listen to what I'm going to say now, have the right to bear arms like the Americans have, the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. I want citizens to have guns and be trained in marksmanship and be trained mm -hmm. with their guns like the Finns do and the Swiss, the, the Swiss people do. Because the, the moment that, that you teach a person those basic things about firearm ownership, mm -hmm. responsible use, mm -hmm. The responsibility coming with that, the pride coming with that, because you can defend yourself. Mm. It's a very basic, primal thing inside all of us. You empower a person. You can very easily see when when people speak around a, a, a bright flash fire. Who are the guys that, that don't don't have guns and have nothing to do with guns? They're the braggy ones mm. that have shot the biggest gun and the biggest caliber. But they don't even know what what it's. They they would they would speak of a revolver, but then they they will speak about a, a caliber that goes into a pistol, and you're standing there like, gosh. It's like me trying to explain that. Gosh, that, that, that thing is going to, to blow up in, in in your face. It's going to take your head off. But boy, if you think you you shot it, then then maybe you shot it, whilst you were on the drugs or something. But be it as may. And then you have the real firearms owners and those people trained in firearms and understanding firearms and, and you can see the pride and, and self-controlling in, in those people. And that is why we need the right, the right to bear arms, the right to bear firearms, to own firearms, to, to have it, to have training in, in that. I would propose yes. even to go so far as to say that every citizen must be issued a gun. And being, uh, and they must be educated. Uh, they must it. be educated and they yeah. must be trained. And every six months or every three months or whatever, they must go to a camp. They, they, must, be, they must be given the opportunity to, to once again receive training. And, and we, we must make sure um, that they, 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 can, they can properly defend themselves. Definitely. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Why don't we have school shootings? No, I don't want to go there because that, that, can, that can cause problems in, in South Africa. In the United States, there's a very interesting uh, trend that the school shootings take place in areas where there's gun, gun control laws in, in, in place. Why? Because the schools are undefended. Mm -hmm. Let's say in a given school in Texas, there's 20 teachers in that school and 10 of them carry on a daily basis. Do you think, do you think a crazy nutcase will go into that school and, and start shooting children? No, you will be gunned down within minutes. What happened some time ago, um, Hansi Kronier, no, um, US, US, US's brother, Peter, you remember Peter? 
There was an attack on the church. Peter was one of the, the few guys armed. He took out his, his firearm and, and he shot one of, of the assailants. If not the only one, I can't remember the scenario anymore. And it saved a lot of people who would have been gone down there in that church. That, that happened again in South Africa. One example. One example. The carrying of firearms. If a person sees a firearm or the bump, the, the signature, you call it the signature on a person's body, um, yes, you can make yourself a, a target. That's true. But in most cases, it stops the small-time petty criminal of even thinking of attacking you. That's Why? True. Because he knows. He knows you're a porcupine. <laughs> he knows that. If you come for him, something something is, is going to, 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 to cause blood flowing from, from, yeah. his, from his, his, his body. And that, that is why it's, it's so important. But um, I, I read about the, the Americans one, one time. I, I, I read this, this very interesting or um, I, I think thought-provoking meme. And it, it was showing the Second Amendment about gun rights and hunting. And then it said, but our found, founding fa fathers in, in the United States now didn't have gun rights to hunt. They had gun rights to shoot up governments. Now, I'm not saying go and shoot up the government. Please, Jana, I send you with the police in Manlupskitne. Right? Of the Dragiran Lupskitne. Of Ferramapos Lupskitne. You don't have Lupskitne. Right? It's in elk geval net a puppet. <laughs> All I'm saying is that that the citizen of a country must be in a position mm -hmm. that the government cannot come and, and, and scope and donor. Yes. We call it a jackboot. We don't want a citizen to be under the jackboot mm -hmm. of any government. And how do you counter that? Through the barrel of a gun. There's that old adage of come and take it from my cold, dead hands. It, it goes back to, to the old saying of Molon Labe, come and take it. Yes, my rights. Yes, my property. Come and take it. The, the English has, has the saying of, of a man's home is, is his castle. What do you do in your castle? You protect yourself and you defend yourself and you defend your loved ones. Nice. That is why I'm, I have so much passion about this whole issue of arming and training and properly equipping citizens to defend themselves against the criminal yeah. element up there. You because should be of, able to protect yourself. I mean, really, it, it, it's normal. <laughs> it's normal. It's, it's a basic instinct of, of any human being and any, any living creature, even plants. And uh, now we are told, well, you, you're like a little child. You can't own a firearm. You can't own a dangerous weapon. Um, that is now the job of the police. But the so police define has, a dangerous weapon. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean... <laughs> If, if, you, if you're trained and, and, and skilled in, in the real arts, the real martial arts, you will, you will realize, and that is one of the things that you are taught, that anything and everything is a dangerous weapon. Oh, yes. And uh, if, if you look around you now, you will be, be able to spot at least four or five or six things that can potentially be used to fatally wound an attacker on you. Yes. Right. But let's, let's step off that. Okay, we've, we've spoken about a lot of things. We're going to have a lot of videos in future relating to this. Mm. We want your inputs. Um, mm. I'm also looking for a core of leaders, real leaders, not people just speaking. I spoke to, to a girl, yes, not a girl, my apologies. She's a shield maiden. Mm -hmm. She's a real fucking shield maiden, right? Yesterday, I'm not going to say her name, uh, her name starts with a B, she works for, for a certain institution or state, they are opposing the VAX now. And that she was telling me, but I took on this one, and then in that meeting I, I took on that director, and then I took on mm -hmm. that advocate from, from the HR, and I, and I was sitting there and I, I, I was saying to her, I think you were, you were present, I said to her, I want you as one of my, of, of my generals, Yes. you must come on, on to my team, because you're a fighter, it's yes. in your spirit, you can't stop fighting, you're mm -hmm. like a pit bull. You put a pit bull, and I'm, I'm not condoning um, dog fighting. It's, it's an ugly thing to do. It's, it's, it's terrible. So I'm not condoning it. I'm simply illustrating something. If you put, put, put a pit bull in, into a pit, and, and you put another, another one in, in there, any other dog, it will fight because yeah. it's, it's, it's its natural way of doing things, right? And I'm not offending the petty owners out there. Pit bulls are actually very... Very nice and those are dogs. Loving, yes. Very loving dogs if, if they are trained and, and yes. raised properly. But if your your inner nature is one of war, if you're a warrior, not a soldier, there's a difference between a soldier and a warrior. 
Um, sometimes the one is the other, but it's not necessarily the same thing. If you're a warrior, it's in your heart to fight, then I want you. I want you to contact me because we're going to have to fight. And I'm not speaking here necessarily of a gunfight, of a civil war, of art war, or killing people, anything like that. Jana, no, it's actually um, just people who are, who are not afraid to stand up for themselves. I want those people to start contacting me. We need that core of leadership. Because from the old leadership, and I'm not, not being ugly here, I've been in, in politics, folks politics, for, for decades. Um, we have a few very good leaders, but then we have nothing beneath them. Remember how our command structures work? You need generals, you need colonels, and you need captains, and then you need, you need uh, leaders on all levels to do different things. And unfortunately, we have a few very good leaders on top, nothing in, in the middle, mm. and then uh, a bunch of income poops <laughs> trying to, to do things down below and, and actually causing more, more problems mm. than, than, than doing good. So I want, we, I want you to, to also come into contact with me. We, we, we are now sitting upon a journey that's going to be a year and a half, two years long, because we need to act now. This, this is our last chance. But it's also the golden opportunity that has been given to us. The fluidity, the political, social and economic fluidity is there for us to proceed and make real change. And therefore we, we need to, to keep this discussion going and build on it and see where, where it leads. For sure. And I also just want to mention those people that um, are able to help us who, or who want to help us. We're definitely going to do background checks. We have to, unfortunately. It's nothing personal, but we have to. Yeah, Ramkat some time ago caused, <laughs> I think, unintentionally. <laughs> Hi, Ramkat. Yeah, you're going to problems with us, young. But uh, <laughs> um, he, he caused quite a stir in, in so-called Afrikaner writing circles when he proposed that, that we need to polygraph all Afrikaner leaders to see who is who's agents of state or not. <laughs> Then all of a sudden, <laughs> it was it was Chaos. people people coming down on 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 Ramkat like like never before, and, and even people getting angry at me when I only made a video to tell Ramkat, but this is how you must do a polygraph <laughs> test. But but yes, we we are definitely going to background check people. Mm -hmm. um, we passed the point where we we can trust any anybody. We've seen, unfortunately, we've seen myself and Leonie on a personal level. And I think you as as a nation yeah. have seen uh, the last couple of months how we can be dropped by leaders and by the big men and we we pass that point people we pass that point if, if a person is in this game for for himself or for his self-worth or for whatever reason not mm. in the interest of our country and our people then he doesn't have a chance he doesn't mm. have a position with me go and you can't just go, go. on people's word that we yes. have learned as well because people don't keep their word. Un so, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah. the proof is in the pudding. It's about what you do about it. I love that. The proof is in the pudding. Yes. Okay? yes. Go for lacquer pudding. Lacquer pudding. <laughs> don't, don't come and tell me about the pudding. Bring me the pudding. Yes. Right. Okay. <laughs> Let's end off this, this video. Thank you so much. It's been a long video. But it's going to be the first of a series of videos. It's going to, to also go onto the Knowledge Hub in different smaller portions for, for you to, to download and listen to and, and whatever podcasting. Um, but yes, thank you so much for your time. Um, and I hope we could enlighten you a little bit as mm. to, to what is what is now in, in the direct future and what Skulk and Leone is, is going to be pretty much busying themselves with um, to bring positive, real change in South Africa. So I salute you. And also, if you have any other questions, please let us know. Thank you guys. Thank you.